So number one, ask for the average rate of change. And I'm going to just denote that. Well, I'm going to write it out. Average rate of change. In this guy right here. From x equals 1 to x equals 3. And I will tell you that there is, yes, you can see that. There is, why are you looking at me like that? You know? Why are you looking? You're looking at me like you don't believe me. No, that is number one. So there is an average rate of change problem on the multiple choice and on the free response. So this is definitely a good one to go on. And I will tell you that the free response is a quadratic model. It's an application that uses a quadratic model. Do not freak out about it. It's a fairly straightforward. It looks kind of freaky because there's a fraction in it. and It's okay. It'll work out. You know, no calculator. Okay. What? Okay. No calculator on the multiple choice or free response. I would get started on it early. Oop. Okay. I'm well away from you, and you know this. F of 3, the average rate of change is going to be F of 3 minus F of 1 over 3 minus 1. This is a very important problem. Well, what is F of 3? Let's find those values over here. F of 3 is going to be 5 times 3 squared minus 6, which is 5 times 9, 45, minus 6. I believe that is 39. Is that correct? Make sure I get the arithmetic correct, please. And F of 1 is going to be a straightforward problem. That's going to be 5 minus 6 over just 5 minus 6, which is negative 1. So F of 3 minus F of 1 will be 39 minus negative 1 over 3 minus 1 which is 40 over 2, which is 20. Okay, now I have to, that's only one point. The average rate of change on the verbal, on the free response is worth three points. So I have to, what do I need? Can you tell me something that I need, Ms. Klein, for a point? Uh, I need this first statement. I think this is what you mean. On average, on average where? Yes. And that's, I think, and I thought that that's what you meant. For on average from x equals 1 to x equals 3, that's a point. Okay. What else do you need for the three points? Kylie, can you tell me? Well, we're going to need this whole statement. Since the average rate of change is 20, what's going on here? It's increasing. So f of x is increasing. On average, from x equals 1 to x equals 3, f of x is increasing My battery is going bad in my pen. That's another point, correct? That's your f of x is increasing Where's the third point come from? The third point actually comes from this value right there. 
that we're going to put in here. So you get a point for the actual average rate of change, which is that numerical value. You get one point on stating on average from x equals 1 to x equals 3, and then one point for stating f of x is increasing 20 y units per x unit. You could, in theory, get this point if this was wrong. You could, in theory, if you got the wrong average rate of change, get two out of three points. But if you just give the average rate of change, you're only going to get one out of the three points. That is going to be worth three points. Okay. Uh, is there another? You know, all this, uh, shall we do the... Uh, is there another question? Are you good with the symmetric stuff? The symmetric point. I'm looking at number six. What do you want from me? Okay, let's go over, golly gee, let's go over number three. Some people struggle with the equations of lines. Number three, I want the equation of the line through the points negative four, five, and seven, comma, two. I think this is fairly straightforward. My algebra, I'm doing this with my algebra two students right now, and they're struggling with it. And it's just because they've only did it one time in Algebra 1. We did it, I think, in Geometry, and we did it in Algebra 2, Equations of Lines. Because we did this in Geometry, did we not? I don't know if you did, Ethan. You were, uh, you, yeah, and you, you took, like, in the eighth grade, right? Yeah. And I ended up taking Are you a junior? And your ninth grade year. Yeah, because half of the time you're going in and out of the social. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's why you are our, our uh, and that's okay. You're junior. You're absolutely fine. You guys had that, uh, heck yeah. <laughs> I can get down with that. You guys were in the eighth grade geometry, and then you did last year as freshman, you did algebra two. Okay. All right, so let's find. So you guys are good to go with this. Are you a junior? You are a junior. You're a, you were in that freshman class, Braxton, right? You were in that. And I think you you were too. That well, th That's good. And it, uh, it's neither here nor there. Okay, step number one, Braxton. What am I going to do, Braxton? Step number one. Braxton, he's over here. I'm going to do the slope for me. And what is the slope? So it's going to be 2 minus 5. I was just kind of freaking you out there. Looking at you, but talking to that young man. So it's going to be negative 3 over 11. Did I do that right? I think I did, right? Okay, so now I'm going to do point slope form and end up in slope intercept form. Point slope form. What point? What point do you want to use? Doesn't make. The, Dylan, what point do you want to use? First one or second one? First one. So I'm going to go five plus negative three elevens x minus negative four is x plus four. And in slope intercept form, this is. Do they want the slope? Oh, they just wanted the slope. Okay, so we can extend it and make it, and that's a line, and let's go ahead and get crazy. Negative 12 elevens, and now I have to go out here, and I have to go back in time to what? I don't know, fifth grade? I don't know when you learn how to do fractions. Fifth grade, sixth grade, something like that. Maybe even fourth grade. So this is going to be negative 12 elevenths plus 55 elevenths, right? Which is that, what is that, 33 elevenths? So that line, if I were going to write it in slope-intercept form, which I might, I may or may not, is equal to this. Thank you. 
I only have 55 minus 12 is 43. And it is. Thank you, kind sir. All right. Thank you very much, Braxton. I appreciate that. Uh, per, how about number four? This is something that people struggle with. I want perpendicular. This is a stick man problem. Perpendicular to this line right here, to this line that passes through this point right here, five negative six. The best way to do this is to come up with a, a just a graphical representation. I, I of the 60 algebra two students that I have right well at the beginning of the week they wouldn't be able to do that problem. And as a math teacher, we scratch our head, but I've realized over the years that some things it just takes a while for students to process. Stickman is walking on that line. He's not walking up nor is he walking down, but he is indeed walking in the equation of that line is y equals 9. Because all of these points have a y coordinate of 9. By the definition of vertical and horizontal lines, a line that is perpendicular to that line is going to look like this. What color do we want? Let's go green. It's going to look like this. But I want that line. Those are perpendicular. Vertical lines are, hor are perpendicular to horizontal lines. Now I want that, I want that through the point 5, negative 6. Well, where is the point 5, negative 6? That's going to be in quadrant 4, is it not? It's going to be down here, somewhere in here. Let's just say it's about, let's just say it's right there, 5, negative 6. So all I'm going to do is take that line and what's the equation of that line? X equals 5. There's actual question on that, on the multiple choice like that. If you miss that, you would be a silly head, classified as a silly head. Oh, here you go. Here's a good one to review. It's a great one to review. And we can do a graphical representation of that, or we can just use the distance formula. I'm going to use a graphical representation of that particular problem. And I will tell you, I'm writing this calculus curriculum, and I'm, you're, going to be, you're going to be fortunate to have this. I'm going to have a calculus curriculum exactly like this pre-calculus curriculum, where, where it's interactive, and you have most of the notes, but you have to fill in the notes. And I just did write last Saturday the lesson on horizontal and vertical distance because it's so daggone important in the study of calculus. And that's how we worked out the distance. We actually used the distance formula. We developed the distance formula. So if I want to find the distance from negative 3 to 9, that point's going to be over here. Two negative two is going to be down here. And I want this distance right here. Blue. I want the length of that. So I'm going to need the distance formula. Well, or I could just use, think about this. I think I can do a dotted line. I can do a dotted line. I can do this line. I'm going to do a dotted, that line dotted. Yeah, I think that's cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Kind of off, but that's okay. 
So I need this distance right here. I need this vertical distance. That vertical distance is going to be top minus bottom, which is my 9 minus negative 2, or 11, because it's going to be 9 plus that 2, 9 top minus bottom. And this distance right here is going to be right minus left, which is 2 minus negative 3 is 5. Therefore, by the Pythagorean theorem, this distance right here, we all have studied the Pythagorean theorem like forever, this distance, we'll call it distance squared, is going to be 5 squared plus 11 squared. Therefore, the distance is going to be the square root of 25 plus 121. And what is that? That's going to be 6, 146, the square root of 146. And I don't think that you're going to need to... Um, that has a 2, it's 73. That actually is simplified. Is that what you got? Has anyone worked on this? Has anyone worked on this review? Morgan, you have. Did you get this, Dixon? All right, good deal. So double check if I get something wrong. Hey, let's do number 12 about Uncle George, shall we? Here's number 12. Uncle George. Does anybody have an Uncle George? I don't. Uncle George is driving his car. At 3 p.m., he's 50, he is at mile 56, at mile 56. He must be on the expressway because they have the mile markers on the expressway. Do you know, do you know that? Do you know about, do you know that the expressways are, every mile they have a mile marker? Did you know, did you guys know that? Did you know that, Luke? Did you know that? You know, like if you're on the expressway, you'll see the mile markers. And do you know where those those mile markers reference? Anybody? Do you know where they reference? Because if they're mile marks, they have to start somewhere. They reference. Do you know, Will? So that's that's cr crazy. Have you? Has it... He's at mile 56, and at 6 p.m. He is at mile. Let's see if old Uncle George is at 232. Let's see what his average rate of change is. So let's see here. I want to read it correctly. At 3 p.m. he's at 56 miles. At 6 p.m. he's at 232. What is his average rate of change from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m.? Let's figure that out. 232 minus 56 over 6 minus 3. You can use my calculator this time, Braxton, so I don't make a mistake. 232 minus 56, bam, 176 over 3. 176 divided by 3 is about 58, 58.66. Okay, so, hey, was Uncle George speeding? Depends on what the speed limit was. Michelle, thank you. Okay, so let's explain this. The average rate of change then on average from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So that is a point on average from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. What has happened? George distance has increased what? Fifty eight point six six. 
miles per hour. And guess what else you can say here? I need a battery in my pen really bad. On average, from 3 to 6 p.m., George went 58.66 miles per hour. So well, here's your three points. One point, two points, three points, including miles per hour. Okay? So you should get the you should get the average rate of change. Do I need to is there something else? Yes. Okay, so I thank you very much. So here's number nine. It said consider this guy this linear function right here y is equal to this linear function given in point slope form 9 plus negative 1 third x plus 8 billy do you know what the range of this linear function is billy billy you're right, Billy. It's all reals. Why is it all reals? Because the range of all linear functions is all reals. Now, the range of quadratics is not real, all reals, but the range of linear functions is all reals. Same way with the domain of a linear function is all reals. So that's A. B says... Find the equation line that is parallel to the above that passes through 5, negative 2. So if I want parallel to this linear function through five negative 2, I'm going to use point slope form. I'm going to come up with a new function. I'm going to call it g. I could just call it y. It doesn't matter. But it's going to be negative 2. It has to have the same slope. Negative 1 third x minus 5. If I'm not mistaken, I think the question is written like that. But if it did ask you to put it in point slope, pardon me, slope intercept form, all I'm going to do is do some simplification. Whoop, whoop. Minus one third x. Negative negative is positive five thirds. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I can subtract two from five thirds. So five thirds minus two is the same as five thirds minus six thirds, which is going to be negative one third. So this new linear function then is going to be negative one third x minus one third because this is negative one third. Girls, did I get that correct? And keep in mind, I think that I think that on the multiple choice, it's in point slope form. It might be in this form, but I, I don't know. I think it's in this form right here. And then part C there. Ah. Part C or part B says, find the equation line perpendicular through 1, 7. Perpendicular to f of x. So perpendicular to f of x, the slope is going to be 3. m is going to equal 3. So my new function, we can call it h of x now, or we can call it y. It doesn't matter. And I want it through this point right here. 1 comma 7 will be 7 plus 3 times x minus 1. And I think that's a super easy one to simplify, if you will. I think this is simply going to be 7 plus 3x minus 3. I believe that in, is going to be 3x plus 4. 
Okay? Yes, and thank you very much for the question. The midpoint of... Negative 3, 9, and 2, negative 2. You know what I'm going to do. Well, I have that graphical representation. Whoopsie. So you don't get freaked out and forget the formula. If I'm at negative 3, 9, I'm over here. I'm at 2, negative 2, I'm over here. I want the midpoint of this line right here. Well, it looks like it's going to be golly gee. And let's see here. Uh-oh. I bet I'm out to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Because it looks like the midpoint is about right here. But I don't think that's right because I don't think my uh, diagram has to scale. So I'm going to try to scale my diagram a little bit better. And I think that's going to help. I need to get these rascals out of there. What's going on here? Let me get this guy out of here. So I'm going to scale it. If you take the time to scale it, one, two, three, one, two, and let's go five, ten. Negative three, nine is going to be somewhere here. Two, two is going to be, ah, crap, I didn't, the X and Y scales. Let's just find the daggone thing. It is going to be, I think that's, that's not, that's going to be about right. Right there. Anyway, what the heck is the formula? The formula is this. You add the X's, you divide by 2, you add the Y's, and you divide by 2. That one just might be a formula problem. So if you add the Y's, it's going to be negative. They add the X's, negative 3 plus 2. Divided by 2 is going to be negative 1 half, which is about that. Add the Y's, it's going to be 9 plus negative 2 divided by 2, which is 7 halves. So the midpoint will be negative 1 half, 7 halves. Okay? And I'm sorry for my pen. And I rushed through that, and I apologize for rushing through that. That's a formula problem. So you just need to know that this... Because there is no index card on this. You know that, right? And there's only going to be one midpoint problem. If I were going to study something, I'm going to...